Good morning. Welcome to all of you and all those watching by, through live stream, and also the fifth grade children, which is their first uh, school mass since the, in many months since the pandemic. And today uh, is the feast of the birthday of the Blessed Mother, a mother who bore our Redeemer, the Son of God, and uh, who brought us salvation. And so in honor and in thanksgiving of the Blessed Mother, let us now worship our Son by saying, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In order to worship Mary's Son worthily, let us first acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. <clears throat> Impart to your servants, we pray, O Lord, the gift of heavenly grace, that the feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin may bring deeper peace 
to those for whom the birth of her son was the dawning of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. The Lord says, You, Bethlehem, Aprotha, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient times. Therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born and the rest of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord in the majestic name of the Lord his God. And they shall remain for now, his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace, the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. 
All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. The Gospel of the Lord. We sing in today's office of the liturgy, the nativity, O Virgin Mother of God, brings joy to the whole world because from you came forth the Son of Justice, Christ our Lord. Mary's birth is a prelude to the birth of Jesus because it is the initial point of the realization of the great mystery of the incarnation of the Son of God for the salvation of mankind. Apart from God's plan for the birth of Jesus, his son on earth, nothing else was so important in God's mind as with the birth of Mary for the redemption of humanity. We see references made to her in today's first reading from the prophet Micah and other places in the Old Testament, giving us a glimpse of what was going on in the mind of God regarding our redemption and the birth of our Blessed Mother. We see the fulfillment of God's promise of sending His Son through the Blessed Mother in the Gospel today. And, the, and as the prophet Isaiah states, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and thus they shall name him Emmanuel, proving that God was with us from the beginning of time, and He continues to be with us to this day. This is why we must never stop believing and we must repent so that we might convert and draw closer to Jesus through Mary, his mother, who was born for our sake. I, along with my fellow priests a couple of days ago, watched the recently released movie Fatima. All of you must try and watch the movie if you can because it is very per per pertinent to the times that we live in. Fatima is a town in Portugal and in the year 1917 was involved in the First World War. The war had made many people poor and many people and soldiers were dying. The governor, government of Portugal at that time was inspired by liberal and enlightenment, and enlightenment values and was very much against the Catholic Church. Lucia one of the three children to whom the Blessed Mother appears tells us about her experiences to a professor in the movie of seeing the Blessed Mother. Lucia states that the appearance of the Blessed Mother was necessary at that time because it was important. The government at that time was very suspicious of the Catholic Church and was closely monitoring the Church because it feared the truth. They believed that what the church taught was just religious superstition. They believed that it was only the government who will be the savior and protector of the people and that God should not be involved. Mary, the Blessed Mother, knew that this was so wrong and so she appears to the three children, Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco, on May the 13th, 1917. She would appear to them on the 13th of every month for the next six months. Among the many messages she gave to the children, the most important was that we must pray the rosary every day to bring to the world peace and an end to the war. She also tells the children that they must learn to read because it was also very important. Initially, nobody believed in the children. They had seen the blessed, that they had seen the Blessed Mother. Even her parents were doubtful, yet the experience of Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco was so powerful that nothing would shake them from their faith. Their faith was so strong that even the mayor and the police of the town of Fatima could not persuade the children to say that the appearance of the Blessed Mother was false. They tried to frighten them by having them arrested to force them to lie, but they failed. Mary had told the children that they will be suffering for them, and the children tell her that they want to be with her. Mary then tells them that she will take both Jacinta and Francisco soon, 
but that Lucia had to stay for many more years because Jesus had chosen her as the messenger of faith in Mary's immaculate heart. She comforts Lucia by saying that one day she will come for her and that she will never leave her alone. The professor in the movie asked Lucia as to why were they chosen. They were only around 10 years old and how come Mary gave them the message of suffering and repentance to 10 year olds? The professor found it hard to believe that God would want three 10 year olds to make sacrifices. The unbelief of the professor is the same problem with many of us adults today. We think we know better than God, the very creator who made all of us. Lucia replies that it was only for one moment that they did not understand, but they believed and did not bother to understand any more and were more than willing to suffer. The professor begins to understand that the mother appeared to 10-year-olds because messages from the innocent children to the world would be more sacred and could not be de denied. She, tell, she tells the children and to us that we must stop insulting God. We adults can be so stubborn in not believing the truth. We want to believe only what is convenient to us, thinking that we know better than God. This is what is insulting to God, and this is our tragedy. Mary knows the consequences for those who insult God when she shows the vision of hell to these children. This proves that there is a hell and that there are those who will end up there because they won't believe and won't stop insulting God. Things are very similar today as it was in 1917 and it is much more sophisticated and the insults to God are very visible today in the world and in our country especially. Corrupt pol politicians along with some in the media are in the forefront in the attack and insult of God in their war against the sanctity of life, the sanctity of family, and the attack against our faith. At one point, Lucia is asked by the professor if she had any regrets, and she responds with a question herself. Does it look like the world has heard the message of heavenly peace? Her only regret, she says, is that she has not done enough to please the Blessed Mother. Mary comes to us again even today, and this movie is an ominous reminder of the message of Fatima that if we don't stop insulting God, there will be more suffering, and so all sinners must convert. Our faith must be so strong and deep, just like the children, because they are pure and innocent of heart and are willing to suffer for the truth. Our faith should not depend on miracles and the need for comfort from instant happiness, which is a flimsy faith. It must be a full and wholehearted and, un and unconditional despite the suffering. We will find hope that will become visible to us in the Immaculate Heart of Mary, just like it became visible to Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco. Our Lady of the Holy Rosary is going to lead her people who believe in her Son through peace and love. Pope Francis loves the Blessed Mother, and he believed in the message of Fatima so much that on the 100th anniversary of Mary's appearance to the children on May the 13th of 2017, Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco were made saints of the church when he canonized them. The birth of Mary proclaimed the coming of her son more than 2,000 years ago, and she proclaims the second coming of Jesus today. The birth of Mary is the dawn of our redemption. Her appearance projects a new light over all human race, a light of innocence, of purity, of heart, of grace, a sign of the great light which will inundate the world when Jesus Christ, the light of the world, will appear once again. The mother loves her children because of their innocence and purity of heart, and that is why she chose to appear to Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco at Fatima 
and to Bernadette a few years earlier at Lourdes to give them very complex messages. She is with her children today, close to them, and praying for them to Jesus. We are called to transform our hearts with a childlike trust in God when we receive the Eucharist today, so that we will clearly hear her message, which will lead us to her son. Pray, pray the rosary every day, and when you don't find answers, even if you don't find answers, because she will never leave you alone. Let us thank God generously on the birthday of the Blessed Mother. Let our prayer to the Blessed Mother be the prayer of St. Bernard of Clairvaux today. In dangers, difficulties, and doubts, I will always think of you, O Mary. I will always call you. May your name, O Virgin Mary, be always on my lips and never leave my heart. Grant that I may never lose sight of the example of your life so that I may never go astray. And if you protect me, I will have nothing to fear. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse, recourse to thee. Amen. Please stand. Joining the Mother of God in her song of praise, we pray, abide with us. That the church may proclaim its faith in Mary's Son, we pray. That the baptized may find joy in Mary's example, we pray. That the lowly may find strength in the humble woman of Nazareth, we pray. That the poor of God's flock may be nourished with love, we pray. That the sick may find hope in the Mother of God, we pray. That we may witness the coming of Israel's ancient ruler, we pray. For all the intentions of Brad and Susie Hayden, we pray. And that the dead may behold the majesty of our God, we pray. And for all your intentions that you hold in the silence of your hearts, we pray. Let us all together pray the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the humanity of your only begotten Son come, O Lord, to our aid, and may he who at his birth from the Blessed Virgin did not diminish but consecrated her integrity by taking from us now our wicked deeds, make our oblation acceptable to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the feast day of the Nativity of the Blessed Ever Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Barry our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For all those who are watching through live stream, we'll now pray the spiritual communion prayer by St. Alphonsus Liguri. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Mm -hmm.
Let us pray. May your church exalt, O Lord, for you have renewed her with these sacred mysteries as she rejoices in the nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which was the hope and the daybreak of salvation for all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessings. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his greatness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with this blessing. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives.